Hi everyone, it's Miss Jen and today we are in my garden because we're talking about eating vegetables and what better place to be than in the garden with the vegetables to talk about vegetables. So that's where we're at today. So before we get started, I have some instructions for you. I want you to stand up and spin around in a circle three times. Go ahead. One, two, three. All right, now I want you to jump on one foot while you rub your belly, pat your head and nod your head up and down. Go ahead, try that. All right, you can stop. Have a seat. Now, did you do what I asked? Did you obey me, even if it seemed silly or it seemed hard? Well, that's what we're talking about today. We're going to talk about obedience today. And we're going to look in the book of Daniel. Now, is Daniel in the Old or the New Testament? It's in the Old Testament, right? All right, so if you want to do an activity with me in a little bit, you're going to need a couple of things. You need some vinegar, not a whole lot. I only have like a little bit, like this much in a cup. You need a little bit of vinegar. You need some salt. It can be out of a salt shaker. You don't need a big container like this. You need a penny. Get a penny that's not real shiny, one that's kind of dirty looking, okay? You need a cotton swab and a spoon. Now, if you're like me, you probably want to have a paper towel handy too because I've been making a bit of a mess sometimes when I do these things on the camera. So maybe get a paper towel too. All right, so if you want to get those things, go ahead, pause the video, and then turn it back on when you have everything. All right, you have everything? Okay, we don't need them quite yet, so put those to the side, and we're going to talk about uh, the lesson first. Okay, so last week we learned how the people of Judah had been captured and they were taken to a country called Babylon, and Daniel and three of his friends, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, were chosen to be part of a group of men for this special training, where they were going to get special training for three years. Now the king said that all the men in this training should be given the same food that served in the king's palace because the king wanted to make sure that they were really fed well and they got to be big and strong. So Daniel knew, now here's the thing, God had made some rules about what the people of Judah could and couldn't eat. It wasn't because God didn't want the people to eat good things, and it wasn't because God likes to make lots of rules for us, but it was a way for the people of Judah to be set apart as different from people who didn't worship God, like the people of Babylon. It was a way to show that they were different because they worshiped God. Now, Daniel knows that some of the food being served to them comes from pigs and the rules that God has given say that you sh some of the food that you shouldn't eat is food from pigs and you shouldn't eat or drink anything that's been served or offered as a sacrifice to another God, a false God. So Daniel you know some of the food that they're given comes from pigs. Some of the wine that they're given is being offered to the false gods of Babylon before it's being given to them. And Daniel and his friends want to obey God's laws. So Daniel asks permission to not eat all of the food that they've been given. Now the official and the king that's in charge of this training, he likes Daniel very much, but he says, oh, Daniel, I'm going to be in huge trouble with the king if the king sees that you and your friends are getting weaker because you're not eating all of the king's good food. I don't think this is a good idea. But Daniel makes a deal with him, and this is what Daniel says. He says, test us for 10 days on a diet of vegetables and water. At the end of the 10 days, see how we look compared to the other young men who are eating the king's rich food. Then you can decide whether or not to let us continue eating our diet. So Daniel said, let's do a 10 day test where we just eat vegetables and drink the water because Daniel knew that those things that they were being served were still obeying God's laws for them to eat and drink that. So he said, let's just test it for 10 days and you can decide whether or not we keep doing it after the end of the 10 days. So the attendant agrees. And after the 10 days, here's what happens. At the end of the 10 days, Daniel and his three friends looked healthier and better nourished than the young men who had been eating the food aside by the king. So after that, the attendant fed them only vegetables instead of the rich foods and wines. So because Daniel and his three friends obeyed God, God blessed them. And at the end of the 10 days, they were stronger and healthier than all the other men in the training who were eating all of the king's food. And so they were allowed to continue with that diet for the rest of their training. And because they obeyed God, God blessed them even further. And he caused them to learn all of the things in their training very quickly and to become very wise. And at the end of the three years, Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were brought before King Nebuchadnezzar. And he asked them lots of questions. And he found them to be very wise, wiser than any other men in the training. And so he gave them jobs in the palace with him. 
And every time the king gave them a job to do, or he had a question for them, the Bible says the king found them to be 10 times better and wiser than all the other men in the entire kingdom of Babylon. They obeyed God and God blessed them. And Daniel and his three friends tried very hard to obey God, even when no one else around them was. See, here's the thing. The rules that God had given the people about what they could, not, could and could not eat were for all of the people of Judah. That means all the men captured with Daniel and his friends in that training had the same rules about what they could and couldn't eat, and yet they chose to eat all of the king's food. Out of everyone captured, only four men, Daniel and his friends, chose to obey God by what they ate. So what does that mean for you? What can we learn from this? It doesn't mean that you should only eat vegetables and drink water all the time. Although those things are good for you, and when your mom and your dad serve you vegetables, you should eat all of them because they took the time to make them and they're good for you. But that's not all God wants us to get out of this. He wants us to understand that we need to choose to obey Him even when those around us are not. So what does that look like for you? Well, God's Word says that we should love our neighbor. So one way we obey God in this is maybe you invite someone to play with you who's all alone at recess and doesn't have anyone to play with. And you invite them to play. Even if your friends say they don't want to play with them because they're dressed weird or they look a little weird or they don't like that person, you invite them to play anyway and you obey God by loving your neighbor that way. Or you see someone who falls and trips and you stop and you help them. Even if everyone else around you is laughing or staring, you stop and help. That's the way you obey God in that command that he's given you. Another thing God's word tells us is that we need to obey our parents and those in authority over us, like our teachers and our coaches and the people in the government. So one way you could obey God in this is you say no to your friends when they ask you to watch a movie that you know your parents have said that you shouldn't watch because there's some inappropriate stuff in there. Even if all your other friends are watching the movie, you say no, you're not going to do it and you obey your parents and you obey God when you obey your parents. And right now that might mean that when you go out, you put your mask on and you stay a distance away from people because that's what the governor says the rule is for right now. Even if you think wearing a mask is a pain in the neck, even if you're not sick, even if none of your other friends are doing it, when we obey those in authority over us, we obey God and God is pleased. But how do we do that? How do we obey God when no one else around us is? So that's what you need your, uh, you need all that stuff you got earlier, all right? So get your vinegar handy and get your penny. You have your penny and you need your Q-tip, your cotton swab rather. Okay, so dip your cotton swab in your vinegar and we're gonna use your vinegar. See if you can clean your penny with that vinegar. All right, rub it on there. Is your penny getting any cleaner? Because mine looks exactly the same. Does yours look exactly the same? All right, let's see if we can use a little salt. Okay, now you don't need a ton, so put some salt on your spoon. And then we're gonna add the salt to your vinegar and give it a good stir. All right, just mix it up a little bit. It's okay if it's not all mixed in. Okay, now dip your cotton swab back in there. Now try to clean your penny, see what happens. Is your penny getting clean now? Because mine's sure getting really shiny. Look at mine. Here's the back. See how it started? And now it's nice and shiny. See, the vinegar alone didn't do anything to clean our penny, but the salt helped to clean our penny, right? In the same way, if we try to obey God on our own strength, we're not going to be able to do it. But God has given us a helper. Just like the salt helped us clean the penny, God's given us a helper. The Holy Spirit, the part of God that lives inside of us. And it's the Holy Spirit that helps us to obey God. Even when it's hard, even when no one else around us is, it's the Holy Spirit that will help us to obey. And when we surround ourselves with good friends who will help us to make good choices and do the right thing, just like Daniel and his friends, obeying God's a little bit easier too. And God blessed Daniel and his friends when they obeyed him, and God is pleased, and God will bless us when we obey him too. And he's given us a way to do it. He's given us the Holy Spirit to help us to obey, even when it's hard, even when no one else around us is. All right, so let's thank God for that, right? Let's pray. Dear God, I thank you for today. I just thank you uh, 
Thank you for the weather that we could come outside today for the beautiful day that it is, Lord. And we just thank you just for who you are. We thank you that you take care of us, that you are always with us. We thank you that you have given us a way to obey you. Um, even when it's hard, we thank you for the gift of the Holy Spirit, Lord. And I just pray that you would give us courage to say no when we need to say no to our friends, to say yes to you when we need to say yes, Lord, that we would just be obedient to what you're calling us to do. We ask that you'd forgive us for the times that we've messed up and we've fallen short and not done what you've wanted us to do, Lord. But we thank you that you don't stop loving us even when we mess up. We thank you that you give us lots of chances, Lord. And we just praise you for who you are. We thank you. Just help us to be obedient this week. Look for ways that we can be obedient to what you're asking us to do, Lord. And help us to surround ourselves with good friends, too. That'll help us make good choices. And if we need to make some changes in our friend circle, Lord, then help us to recognize that and do that as well. We just praise you for who you are. We thank you that you are at work. We thank you for all you do. Just the mighty, big, wonderful God that you are. And it's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. All right, guys, so if you are playing Don't Eat Pete with me, you're going to add some more pictures to your game board today. Okay, so the first picture you need, there's going to be a picture. Um, we'll put them up on the screen. There's going to be a picture of some pork and a glass of wine with like a circle and a line through to say, don't eat that because that's the stuff God told the people to do to not to eat. So you need that picture. You need the picture of the glass of water because that was what was okay for them to drink. You need the picture of the vegetables, because that's what Daniel and his friends ate, right? And then there's a picture of a, a person making a big muscle. Like, do you like my big muscle? You need a picture of the muscle, all right? Because that's to show how Daniel and his friends were stronger and healthier than everyone else, because they obeyed God with what they ate. All right, so add those pictures to your board. Put them wherever you want. It doesn't matter. And then after you've done that, go ahead and click on the activities. There's a couple activities for you to do. And I will see you again next week. Have a great week, everyone.